Welcome to the Firepower Proof of Value video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the basic installation for the unified or FTD Firepower image on an ASA 5512 appliance. The version of code I'll be using is 6.0.1 as that's the latest public version at the time of this recording. Before starting the installation, one thing to note is certain models will require a Ronmon image upgrade before you start the installation process. Those models are the 5506, 5508, and 5516. I personally had to upgrade my 5506 that was running Ronmon version 1.1.1 to 1.1.8. However, I can't downgrade once you upgrade the Ronmon, so I am unable to show the process in this video series. You can find how to do this in the release notes. You can find the Ronmon image by going to the ASA 5506 webpage, click downloads, and you will find the Ronmon image you need for this purpose. But again, this only applies to the 5506, 8, and 16. Since I'm using an ASA 5512, this doesn't apply to my model. Other things that you're going to need are two image files. One is a .pkg file and one is a boot image. I've also blogged about this process under my blog, thesecurityblogger.com, under the post Upgrading to Firepower 6.0.1 which includes the process to upgrade the RONMON on a 5506. Once you have downloaded the two files and you have your ASA at the right RONMON model, you are now ready to start the installation process. The first step is to reboot your ASA and hit the escape key during the boot up sequence to put the ASA in the RONMON mode, as shown now. You will see the prompt RONMON meaning you have interrupted and you're in Ramon mode. Now you would need to TFTP over the boot image, so you would need the boot image file available on a remote TFTP server. Once that is ready, you need to configure the Ramon to TFTP over that file. The configuration to do this is first setting the IP address of the local ASA using the command address equals and the IP address of your ASA. In my case, I'll use .100. Next, you need to set the gateway using the term gateway. In my case, it's .1. Note, if you're directly connecting the TFTP server to the ASA, you will probably use the IP address of the TFTP server as also your gateway. Next, you need to specify the TFTP server using the command server equals and the IP address, in my case, it's .188, and then last, the file, which is image equals and the file name. In my case, it's FTD boot 9610.cdisk. Once you've done this, type sync to save the configuration. You can view your configuration by typing set, and as I can see, my configuration is stuck. Next, I'll ping my FTP server to make sure I can connect to it. Connectivity works. So now I am ready to TFTP over the boot image. I do this by using the command TFTP download shortened to DNLD. And now I see the image is FTPing over to my ASA. This process will take a few minutes. So I will fast forward to when it completes and it starts the installation process. After about five or so minutes, you should see the installation as completed. And eventually you'll end up with an ASA boot prompt, as shown here. Now I'll need to set up basic network connectivity so I can install the .pkg file. I do this by typing setup. Hostname, I'll leave it default. IP address, yes. For DHCP, I'm actually gonna say yes because my goal is just to get a basic IP address so I can get the PKG file. So nothing's permanent, so I'm keeping things easy and just using DHCP. I do not need IPv6. I do not need NTP, because again, this is just a basic setup, and that's basically it. I hit yes, and it will get 
basic network connectivity so I can download the .pkg file to my ASA. Once the basic network services are ready, it will ask you to press enter and now I am ready to install the .pkg file. There are a few ways to install the .pkg file. In my use case, I'm going to download the file from a Dropbox folder. To do that, I have put the file in the public folder of my Dropbox folder. I can click copy public link, which will show the location of where I should reference my ASA to download this PKG file. Once I have my link to my Dropbox folder, I am ready to launch the installation of the PKG file. The command I will use to do this is system install and the location of my Dropbox folder. I will see a prompt that it will be erasing my hard drive, which is OK, and it will start the process. First erasing the hard drive, and then verifying that I have put in the right link to my public Dropbox folder so it's able to retrieve the image. As you can see, now it's downloading the image, and it will go through the installation process. I'll come back once it's finished and verify that the installation was successful. Once the .pkg file installation has completed, you will see a prompt to log in, stating Firepower Login. The default login is lowercase admin and password admin with a capital A123. You then must go through the long EULA, and after a few minutes of hitting the spacebar and enter key, you will see the end of the EULA, which you must hit enter to agree. Now I must type in a new password. I will set up IPv4 and not IPv6. However, this time I will use a manual IP address since this is my permanent install. I will set my IP address. I will use a class C mask. I will set my default gateway. I will leave the qualify name as firepower. For DNS server, I will just use none. For firewall mode, I will go transparent because this will be for a proof of value. And now my 5512 running the firepower unified image setup is complete. The last step I need to do in the configuration process is specify my Firepower Manager that will be managing my 5512. The configuration for that is configure manager add in the IP address of my manager. And after the IP address, you need to put a special term, and it can be anything. We'll say Cisco in this case, which will be used when we add this to the Firepower Manager. After a few moments, I can see a confirmation that my ASA is now ready to be managed by my Firepower Manager. To add my ASA, I log in to my Firepower Manager. Next, I go to Devices and Device Management. I can see from my previous video that I had managed this same ASA running the non-unified image. I will delete this by clicking the trash can, and once this is deleted, I will re-add this ASA now that it's running the unified image. To re-add the ASA, I click Add, Add Device, specify the IP address. We'll call this ASA 5512 Unified. Add the registration key, which was the word I made up, Cisco. For the access policy, I will go with eval policy, which was set up in a previous video and I will choose all three smart licenses. As a reminder from a previous video, the FTD or unified image requires smart licensing. This means you cannot use the old license model. Fortunately, Cisco lets you run a 90 day evaluation period of the smart licensing model. So you can just go to licenses and click to enable the free 90 day evaluation time and use that for your proof of value. Once you do that and come back here, you can click register and it will add your device. After a few moments, my 5512 will be added to my Firepower Manager and I will be ready to start the proof of value configuration all done by the Firepower Management GUI.